Hey, welcome to another episode of Hops News. It's going to be a fun one tonight. Man, crazy week. I can't believe it's college football season is upon us. And uh, I'm actually taking off work tomorrow and heading to Charlotte myself to be involved in the uh, festivities at Bank of America Stadium tomorrow night. I see Mash over there holding up his shirt. Mash is going to be excited. I don't think they – Mash – yeah, they do play tomorrow as well, right? That's yeah, going to be a uh, – yeah, In that's Orlando. Gonna be, it's going to be a big play day. in Orlando. Yeah, that's going to be a big uh, big football game, our big college football day tomorrow. Uh, I guess it's week one, the start of week one. Actually, it starts tonight. There's a couple of teams play tonight. UAB and Jacksonville State, I believe it is, uh, will kick off week one of college football tonight. So – I'm pretty stoked. Um, been ready to uh, start the tailgating season since about uh, oh about a year and a half ago now. So, be looking forward to getting back out there in it. Uh, have some guests coming to town. Uh, if you follow us on some of the Facebook, you probably have seen it. We've got uh, actually uh, Big Daddy from Feeling Lucky is living in Greenville, South Carolina. That's about two and a half hours south of me now. And uh, he's going to come up to Charlotte tomorrow, and uh, I'm going to meet him for the first time. We're going to hang out and drink a fuck ton of beer before we walk into the stadium to watch the football game. So we'll be there. We've got, uh, as usual, if, you, if you're my wife or my family, you know, when we go to a big game that's not, well, even in our stadium here in, uh, in, at, at Boone and Kid Brewer, we sat behind the visitors. So... It's usually a pretty rowdy time when we go to big stadiums like that where there's a big crowd because uh, we're, I think, Big Daddy and I are row two uh, right at the 50-yard line behind ECU. So uh, we'll be heckling their players and their fans pretty good <laughs> by this time tomorrow night. So uh, it should be a good time. But looking forward to meeting Big Daddy from Feeling Lucky. Uh, guy usually seems like a hoot on the podcast, so looking forward to hanging out with him. And then uh, Saturday, they're coming back up to Boone um, for the Luke Combs concert at Kid Brewer. So, and uh, Lucky's actually flying in Saturday morning. Big Daddy's going to pick him up in Charlotte, and uh, that will be a shit show. I can promise you that. And I think uh, Feeling Lucky or Lucky from Feeling Lucky is wanting to do a podcast, their episode, on Sunday sometime. So... It's likely to be a very hungover podcast episode if we're able to pull it together at all. So look forward to some content. We'll probably do some crazy stuff maybe tomorrow before we go into the stadium. Um, introduce everybody to to Big Daddy on a live stream real quick and talk a little college football. But busy week. Great episode. Let's go check in with the crew we have tonight. Let's go check in with uh, Hoppy down there in Orlando. Hoppy? How's the weather in Orlando? You guys still balmy? I know we had the tropical storm go through our area last night, so it cooled down a little bit. What's the uh, what's the situation on the gold bond status? Yeah, we have a cold front. Uh, we were sitting out back a little bit ago, shortly before we came on here, and it was 75, and there was like a cool breeze. It was like fall has already started, even though we still have three weeks left of fall. Um, but, you know, speaking of pulling it together, don't forget your vitamins this weekend. I'm about to take mine. Mm. But, Great um, call, yeah. Hoppy. You yeah, might have definitely. you may have just saved my life. I'm gonna have to put a tuck <laughs> tuck a few of those away in my uh, in my truck tonight before I go to sleep, so I don't forget. That's a good call right there. That was coming handy this weekend. Yeah, shove them in your wife's purse, stick them in your pocket, do what you got to do because they really do make a difference. I mean, granted, if you drink a fuck ton, you're probably still gonna feel it. They're not that magical, but they are pretty magical. Um, but no, Florida's good. I actually checked out a hop yard in Florida this past weekend that was really cool. It's uh, called Fox Valley Farm and Hop Yard. It's in Apopka, which is like 45 minutes from me. I'm in East Orlando. And uh, they have, if anybody follows Geeks and Beer, she's a great Instagram page to follow. She's in Orlando. Her and her husband homebrew, so they were giving free tastes of their homebrew. I have probably had like five different of their homebrews, and it was every single one was fantastic. Um, so we got to drink the beer and go through the little hop yard and the uh, farmer or the hop yard owner was answering any questions we had about hops and that was really cool and their plan is to actually have them open a brewery next to the hop yard and have like a vineyard kind of experience but for beer um, so i'm looking forward to that anybody comes to orlando definitely check them out 
uh, follow them on the socials, Fox Valley Farm and Hop Yard. And they're going to be doing this fall. They're going to, you know, we can't grow pumpkins here. So that's one thing. We can grow hops. We can't grow pumpkins. So they're shipping pumpkins in and they're going to do a pumpkin patch because that's what Florida pumpkin patches are. You actually have to have a pumpkin ship to you. So that's really cool. And then we had a new brewery open in Orlando on Saturday, Gatlin Hall Brewing. Um, all, very family friendly, huge outdoor area. I only had one beer because it was very busy, but it was really cool delicious beer so florida's doing great you know we're not well we were melting this weekend but today was nice and cool and i'm drinking a tree house i'm drinking massachusetts beer though so i got Very a tree nice. house called mega treat it's a double ipa and it's fantastic because it's probably treehouse. With their best ipas that they have well i you know i'm getting them you know mailed to me obviously so i'm sure that takes away some of the quality but i liked the hazy one better the one that's called Haze. And Julius, actually, I think has been my favorite. But, yeah. Boy. But this is still fantastic. we got to get you to the brewery. Hell yeah. That's what we'll do. If I don't go to Chicago, use your uh, use your free flight and come up to Massachusetts. And we'll go to Treehouse. Uh. And I'll take you to Portland. I'll be cool. Yeah, Portland, Maine is 100% on my to-do list. They're both the an hour each direction. So, really, it doesn't matter which way you go. You can go either way. Everything up there is so close together. It's so funny. Wait a minute, Mash. You aren't going to the football game now? Uh, I, I'm still tracking to go as of now. I'm still going. It's just, it depends. It's it's up in the air due to everything that's going on. I might get more restrictions put on me due to my, my job and things of that nature. Well, that the military looking at imposing restrictions to keep people out of, you know, high populated areas due to coronavirus because we're never going to escape this nightmare. Ugh. And I'm playing Chicago by ear, seeing what he's doing. Yeah. So the plan actually is if we both end up in Chicago together, we are going to record our 100th episode potentially at a brewery for release when our 100th comes up in 30 issues. Nice. And Empirical is the plan. Empirical. Which we had them on uh, Potentially, geeks. yes. They are closed currently due to flooding, so either them or microphone. Yeah. Yeah, awesome or even dovetail at this point since Brew Witch is such a fan. What? How did they get flooded? Did they have a storm? Or what yeah, was... there's a bad storm that came through and wrecked the brewery. They are in the process of finishing up cleaning, and so they should have a firm opening date here soon. I've been in touch with their uh, marketing guy, so um, if it works out, we're going to hopefully be at Empirical doing a live 100th episode. I really want to go there. After we had them on, like, the brewer, the types of beer he makes, and, like, he seems like he's super knowledgeable and into, like, experimenting and doing, um, I think they had, like, a, a, what do you call it, open fermentation kind of sour, and so I have a million questions for him. I really hope we get to go there. Yeah, I think I recall that episode. He lives in Oregon, right? The marketing yeah. guy? Yeah, yeah he lives yeah. in Bend, actually. That's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that did sound like a pretty cool brewery, and they kind of had, like, the uh, pop culture geek theme tap handles all different yeah. stuff like that right in the brewery yeah yeah that's cool yeah, lightsaber tap handles yeah I mean, you don't yeah. get much better than that <laughs> yeah that's pretty cool yeah that'd be a great place for you guys to do your uh recording or uh streaming maybe even of your 100th episode that'd be pretty cool yeah i'm looking forward to doing that or seeing that if you guys do that all right hoppy appreciate you joining us tonight we'll be back with hoppy to get some uh, beer news i think right hoppy you got a beer news tonight i think we both got some beer news beer tonight, news right? and i got beer school. beer school yeah that's right you do have a beer school awesome let's go check in with uh mash out in mountain home idaho mash i bet you can grow some pumpkins out there i did last year i grew about 12 of them so uh, last year was pumpkins this year is cucumbers rainbow char carrots peppers so we might do pumpkins next year again we'll see but yeah i can grow pumpkins out here fresh off the vine well maybe you need to grow enough and send hoppy some so she can start a pumpkin patch in open florida a pumpkin <laughs> patch and then that gives her and the kids an excuse they can come out here we'll hit up a bunch of idaho breweries and then we'll set up a pumpkin patch in my backyard we drink free <laughs> beer while the kids go out and pick pumpkins so we just threw our pumpkin into like our garden last year like where all our plants are and pumpkin they will start to grow and then they just die <laughs> it's just yeah. like the vines start we to grow and then we are there too yeah the next day it's gone um well, well it helps we'll if you water them it does uh, you know, like, the florida <laughs> rain does that on its own and also the soil is pretty bad because it's like mostly sand all there, sand so. yeah um i will say though that i have all my ingredients in for my pumpkin maple coffee stout 
And mm. so I'm going to probably brew that on Sunday since this is going to be my last free Sunday until February. Um, I, I'm looking to brew some, some of that beer, and uh, I'm going to brew it with fresh Dunkin' or not fresh, but like Dunkin' Donuts coffee beans. I have fresh Maine maple syrup like straight from the tree. And then uh, I got my pumpkin seasonings, I got my yeast, I got everything good to go, and it takes about six weeks. So just in time, probably about October, I should be able to get you guys at least a bottle or so. Um, yeah. Assuming it turns out well. I don't know. I haven't brewed a stout before. I've only done ales, so we'll see how it goes. I'm not I've a... heard, I mean, I could be wrong, but I heard that stouts are sometimes easier to hide your mistakes in, whereas your, your ale was really good yeah that's true i mean there's a lot of flavor in the stout so my big thing is when i'm doing the maple i got to make sure i'm adding the maple at like the second fermentation stage and then right before i bottle it or as i'm bottling them like add the maple syrup in there as well otherwise it's going to boil all off and then not not you know you're not going to get a lot of that maple flavor you'll get more coffee you'll get more pumpkin so it's just a matter of it, it shouldn't be too hard but we'll see you know what i uh, found a house today that was at half a million dollars had a brewery <laughs> inside of it and my wife was like uh i texted her and she was just like yeah okay like you're gonna start selling like feet pictures or whatever and i was like i <laughs> yeah. might get her only fans that. fired up you will have it in no time but Ash. if i sold feet pics for a hundred dollars <laughs> all i have to do is sell five thousand of them and then yeah. i can get that house <laughs> yeah yeah but then i'm gonna be stuck in idaho forever uh but I, I'm drinking a good beer actually tonight. I'm drinking Great Notion Brewing out of Portland, Oregon. I'm drinking their XL Jammy Pants, and it's a, a tart ale with boysenberry, marionberry, and blueberry. It's pretty interesting. It's got a cool can. Um, if you haven't had Great Notion before, they're like probably the best brewery out of the Pacific Northwest. To be honest with you, like they are, oh, they just kill. That's what probably they do. fair. And so. Yeah, I mean, this one's wicked good. It's got a pretty good purple color to it. It almost, to me, it almost at first tasted like a, a grape soda, but as I'm drinking it, it warms up. I get a lot of berry flavor. And Marion Berry is native to Oregon. It's like the big time berry that's out here. Just like blueberries are native to Maine, Marion Berries are native to Oregon, and uh, Huckleberries are native to Idaho. So, a little fun fact for you there tonight. Mash has taken us to school, and we ain't even got to beer school yet. I actually, okay, so funny you mention that is in regards to the, the name of our episode, No Tipping, the beer news is kind of a mini beer school into why they're not going to do tipping anymore. So when we get to that, it is like another mini beer school. So you're getting educated tonight, whether it's from Lauren like it. or it's me or it's Jay. Like, you just come here for some education. That's good old-fashioned fun. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like it. I'm looking forward to it. Mash, I'll be honest with you. As you know, I mean, it's no secret to anybody. I'm not a big fan of the pumpkin beers, but man, I am jacked to try your beer. I mean, pumpkin obviously is not my favorite, but you stick some coffee in there and some maple in there, and I might be sold. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that I, so obviously the big thing you got to worry about is you don't want to overpower it with, with pumpkin. Like a lot of people do. That's the problem is with these pumpkin beers. They just pour all the spices in. So I think I've got my recipe. I've been doing a lot of research. I should be fine-tuned to the point where I get just a hint of pumpkin. Like, I, I, I think I have it to where each flavor is going to complement each other, and you might actually be surprised. Hopefully. Nice. Of course, i got to actually excited. go out there and do it. So we'll see what happens. I can't wait to pour it into a pumpkin glass and watch Nightmare Before Christmas. Ooh, <laughs> should be just in time. We'll have to, maybe, hopefully it's done in time, so when we do our commentary track on Nightmare Before Christmas, wow. we'll go ahead and drink it for that. And I'm, uh, I can watch it in November. Oh, I'm, in, I'm our, enjoying our sponsors. Hoppy's favorite beer brand. It's kind of funny because the other day, um, something happened on Twitter. I'm not even sure what spurred it. I think Mash asked him or something like that, tagged him. Okay, I got you. There you All go. Right. So this is what happened, right? We were at 2,999 ah, followers. Right. right. So we were we were there, and I was like, man, we need one more to hit the 3,000 mark on Geeks. And I was like, passed. How about it? And then immediately they, like, hit the follow, <laughs> like, and they're like, yes. okay. And I was like, wait, what? Really? <laughs> like, it was that easy? So PBR follows us on Twitter now, which I'm hoping to kind of turn into something down the road. Maybe we can get, like, because there's social media, like, Say what you will about their beer, but their social media guy. Hey, or don't or say girl, shit about their beer. Don't say I'm shit about their not beer. The worst. I'm, I'm not I'm gonna saying lie, it's not like the worst. you like people have their opinions, right? But 
their social media person slays it out there and uh, they're a fun follow and so who knows now we got toppling goliath and perhaps blue ribbon following us on twitter Ooh, maybe we can turn this into something well it's funny is the day you text us all that like you know you get your facebook memory so 10 years ago to that day i had posted a picture that was just a pbr <laughs> on the beach because i used to drink it regularly nice. i remember going to a club in downtown orlando and it's called the lodge and you can buy pbr in like the uh, 12 pack or if you want to buy six you can buy it and they literally cut the box in half and they just hand you half a box with six unopened pbrs in the club and we were very excited this is a long time ago yeah that's perfect i actually i'm kind of uh, giving my liver a rest tonight because tomorrow it's going to be fucking abused and uh, obviously saturday will be like murdering it so and that's PBRs, there'll be something light in the truck, I'm sure, headed down some to Charlotte Bush tomorrow. lattes. Get some PBRs. Uh, I don't know about Bush Got lattes. PBR on the way. <laughs> Although somebody I mean, did say, background, somebody at work did say, you need to get some Bloody Marys if you're going in the morning. So, I can't do man. Mimosas. You want to, oh, I went, to a, Mary. I went to a winery last Friday, actually, and had some good old, like, mimosas mixed in with, like, just other stuff and it was amazing get yourself a mimosa they cure way better than uh, bloody mary's in my opinion oh well, bloody mary's will fix you like that Gross. yeah i had one you know what, what it fixes it? you staying away from the devil's juice well okay no we had uh, we started <laughs> megacon with guinness bloody mary's because the night before we had ended megacon at a, a local craft beer shop and it was guinness bloody mary with a beer back of a little mini Guinness and it was perfection mm. but you also get breakfast in a Bloody Mary you get olives and you get you know yeah. pickles and you get bacon and yes it's yes it's kind of like brunch on the way in exactly that's true and my kids are, can I point out that my kids real quick are watching this live action musical of Shrek out there and that's what I hear and if you guys haven't seen it it's like taking acid and going through like a haunted house <laughs> uh, that had to be a hell of an experience <laughs> <laughs> it's terrifying <laughs> yeah, I bet hey I, I did find out though today they sent an email about the Luke Combs concert they're opening the fucking parking lots at 10am that wow, place is going to be a die. fucking shit show before it starts at 6.30 <laughs> so oh I'm jealous of that I would love to go to that I'm just here for the tailgates man that's that's probably like the one thing I'm looking forward to most about going to the Packers game in Chicago is just oh yeah getting drunk. It's a noon game, so if I start at like 7 a.m., I'll be good to go. Yeah, that's what I told the guys at work today. I can't drink all day if you don't start early. That's what I'm saying. Like, you got to wake up bright and early. I got to get my Dunks coffee to get it in me. Get a bagel, and then I'm gonna hit the beers right away, straight off the bat. So, Mash, it's, I'm glad you mentioned Dunkin' Donuts. What what spurred you to tag PBR and not Dunkin'? I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't know. I, I, I think it's because we follow them, and uh, I like I said, their 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 Twitter game is strong, man. Like they're a lot of fun to just they they're just goofy, and I was like, you guys, you know what? And we PBR has been a hot topic on our recent episodes. And so I was like, <laughs> screw it, why not? Like, what's up, PBR? Yeah. Why not? And they did, so that's cool. You know what? If if you continue the relationship, I think what would be interesting is to have somebody talk to them, to us from there about the history of PBR. Because there's, yeah. there's a pretty rich history there that dates back to the beginnings of beer in, in America, really, that I think, I think, I think would be interesting. This. I think I can do this. You know what? Let me work some magic, and uh, I'm, I'm going to see what I can do then. Yeah, That'd see be awesome. They're like one of the few that like survived prohibition. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to see if we can't get somebody on to talk about the history of PBR and all that stuff. Then. Tell me you want the official it. historian. Whoever the official historian. I don't know who. I guess. I'll perhaps. even drink a PBR on. Fuck. The, Look. We'll, on we'll air. For real. We'll, we'll be drinking the shit out of them. On that damn episode. I won't just put my PBR koozie on a can. I will actually drink a PBR <laughs> if you get them on. Uh. That'd be that'd be a good time. It'd be it'd be pretty interesting for sure. Those guys have been around oh, for a while. <clears throat> we'll see. All right, let's. Uh, who's ready for some news? Want to news or school first? What's the uh, what's the uh, what's the order here? I feel like it's kind of one and the same. Depending. I feel like I it's guess. host's choice. 
Host choice. Let's go with uh, let's go with news. Let's head down to uh, Hoppy in Orlando. Catch some uh, some beer news and in, uh, in uh, Hoppy. Hoppy, what do you have for beer news? Um, just a couple little th- things. Uh, Deschutes has become the official craft beer of the Pac-12 con- conference. So if you're up in the Northwest, that's pretty awesome because they make amazing beer. Um, that's Melting pretty. Oh, that is pretty Pac-12 big. Twelve after dark, baby. Yeah, yeah, that is that is pretty big because I don't so all these like our stadium has the contract right for the beer that they have. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Like it's up to the individual school how that's going to spread to be like a Pac-12 thing. That's pretty interesting. I don't I, it'll be interesting to see how they tackle that um, because it's got to be complicated. All those schools have to be involved. Um, that hosts the games and, and the football. I want to be so the student who gets sponsored by Deschutes beer out of the Pac-12 <laughs> because that's what I want to do. Yeah. Let me be like the yeah. the water boy who gets sponsored by them, and I'm just pouring beer down the the throats of every running back on the sidelines and shit. It's a, it's the <laughs> linemen. The big linemen are drinking their beer. <laughs> They're all out there. They take a big hit, you know, and they they look a little woozy. They go into the blue tent to get their medical evaluation. You're just pouring beer down their throats and get them back out there. <laughs> and that's how all the football programs got shut down for underage drinking. Yeah. Well, at the UCF games, unless you have tickets to, like, the special area, you can't buy alcohol in the stadium. So that's why everybody gets just trashed before they go in. But. See, Boise State's letting alcohol sales in the stadium this year, and I'm really trying to get to a game so bad. Well, the only games we've been to in the past few years are people who had the special tickets so we could go into the special area and pay extra money for a Goose Island IPA or something. Most of the time, we just tailgate and go home, so we're not that fancy. We live like 10 minutes from UCF, so we'll tailgate and then hitch a, hitch a ride. You don't home. even go to the game? Um, not all, I didn't go to UCF. Go yell at my husband. Who he cares? Went, so. Football is football. I'll watch like, I go, the two well, worst teams in many, America play if it means I get to watch the game. There have been many times where Josh didn't even go and I went to the game. So I'm a more loyalist fan than he is. And next year, our <laughs> daughter will probably be going there, which is super crazy. I asked if she's going to tailgate with us, and she said no. You're a cool college mom now. <laughs> but uh, Belching Beaver in San Diego has released a beer with Deftones. I didn't even know they were still Yeah, there. dude, Deftones. And then um, my main bit of news is some software engineers from Austin, Texas, are about to open a high-tech beer bar in Des Moines, Iowa, called Craft Brew, B-R-U. Um, And the high-tech part is actually, they're also working on developing an app called Poor Choices. Of course, it's P-O-U-R, which they are hoping to market to other breweries all over the place. So, of course, you can look at the menu on the app. You can order. You can pay for the beer. But you can also privately rate it. So it's not like untapped where, oh, you know, you get false ratings because people just don't like sour. So they give it a 0.25 or they're just uncultured swines and they just rate it terribly. So you rate it privately and then you get suggestions based on that. Like, oh, if you like that beer, you're going to like this one or, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it will also give you um, beer releases and news for those specific breweries. So they're trying to market to other breweries around. So this might be an app that catches on. It could be the next Untapped. Who knows? We'll see. Mm, I need to get bottle share in there. Hey. There you go. So in uh, in more beer news, Texas, as they've passed a bunch of new laws here recently, Ooh, just passed a new um, new Sunday purchase of alcohol. Can now purchase alcohol before noon, starting at 10:30 a.m. on Sunday. And I stand by my last point. Why the fuck does it matter what time you can buy alcohol on Sunday? Jesus out there pouring down wine down the throats of poor women on Sundays. And I can't get beer. Yeah. Blue laws are unconstitutional. That they are. So well, some of these states are backwards anyways. <clears throat> still dealing with bullshit antiquated laws um, restricting commerce, which is kind of interesting. But but you can buy it at 4 a.m. at a club. Very true. Yeah, I guarantee you probably in Texas, too. They probably sell until like 6 in the morning or something. Oh. Hell yeah, their bars probably don't close till <laughs> three or four. Well, no, no, in Fort Lauderdale, I don't know what it is now, but I remember when I was younger, like you couldn't buy beer before noon on Sunday, but you could buy it at four a.m. at a club on Sunday on Sunday morning, like because clubs didn't close till four. No, that was true. I remember that when I was in Northwest Florida, like I, the bars didn't close till four or five a.m., but like I couldn't go to the grocery store or the whatever was open at the time and right. buy a pack of beer. Like it made no sense. Every county here is different, so it gets, like, confusing and stuff, but, yeah. And then they're also the open, like, 
I think I mentioned this actually on a show recently, like in, in Fort Lauderdale, they'll pour your beer into a cup and you can walk around downtown in Orlando. They're like, no, chug it. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I'm wondering though, cause there's a lot of places that during the COVID thing allowed open containers, right? And I haven't heard much news from them restricting or going back to the old ways. I wonder if any any area is stuck to kind of uh, the more relaxed, more relaxed laws. Like cocktails to go at restaurants were a big thing up here. Um, I'm just wondering. I haven't heard anything different. Matter of fact, I think the last time we were at the Mexican restaurant, they asked my wife if uh, she wanted her margarita to go. So I'm guessing that some of that... Some of that stuff is stuck around. It's like, yeah, stick a straw in it, if you will. Right. It's a Capri Sun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good, uh, good, good news. Let's run into the, your uh, beer school hoppy, and then we'll get on our topic of uh, no tipping. I don't have music tonight because I don't have the big board set up. I need to send that in to get repaired. But uh, let's check out hoppy at uh, beer school. Okay, so beer school is a little off tonight. So it's actually about hard seltzers. So are they beer? I'm not a fan, but in today's troubling times, hard seltzers can sadly not be escaped. No disrespect to those who enjoy this refreshing beverage. Some of my closest friends drink these regularly in front of me, and I love my friends. However, while this is one bandwagon I am definitely not jumping on, I still wanted to know why breweries keep making them and why beer influencers keep posting them. A couple weeks ago, Brian Roth from Good Beer Hunting joined us and talked about this trend that does not appear to be going anywhere. So, what exactly are hard seltzers in the world of booze? Big Beer is apparently still figuring it out. InBev and Constellation are currently fighting in court over whether or not Corona can have a hard seltzer because Constellation owns the Corona beer brand in the States, but InBev owns the Corona brand everywhere else. So who gets to sell Corona hard seltzer then? So let's ignore the legal dispute and make our own opinions by starting with the hard seltzer brewing process. Step one, boil sugar in some purified water. Step two, pitch yeast. Step three, ferment for two weeks. Step four, add flavor and carbonate. There are also recipes that call for clear malt. However, there is a key beer ingredient missing. Any beer brewer or beer enthusiast knows there are four vital ingredients needed to make beer, water, yeast, malt, and hops. Hops are the beer fan favorite. They give aroma, flavor, preservation, they're magical. And they're missing in seltzers. So in my opinion, no hops, no beer. So why are breweries making these carbonated alcoholic waters that are devoid of hops? They're businesses just like anywhere else, so they gotta appeal to the market. But unlike ciders and wine, they don't need a separate license to make hard seltzer. There could be minor variations in each state, but I wasn't gonna look up the laws in every single 50, of, you know, all the states. Um, but the alcohol and tobacco tax and trade bureau regu regulations state that both malt and sugar-based hard seltzers are beer, which means federal beer laws apply to hard seltzers. There are more things when it's malt-based, but it has to do primarily with advertising, so I'm not going to fall down that rabbit hole. Making seltzer is also not too different from the actual brewing process. You still brew it, and the yeast still eats the sugar, turning it into alcohol. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, because the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau treats seltzers like beer, brewers tend to not just have to ha tend to not just have the license to make seltzer already, but they also have the equipment already. So many of the articles I found, um, and Brian Roth said this as well state that this hard seltzer craze is fueled by people looking for healthier alcohol options and seltzers tend to have less calories so if you equate calories with health then I guess choosing a seltzer over a beer is like choosing a salad over pizza nevertheless there's a shit ton of flavors out there now and if you like it own it drink it love it but don't act like you're doing this for your health I'm also looking at McUltra drinkers here as well um, bonus for anybody who is gluten intolerant at all if a seltzer is not brewed with clear malt it's also gluten free so in conclusion, in my opinion, no hops, no beer. However, I get how and why the craze took off. And while I do not enjoy seeing breweries and beer influencers post about seltzers, if it isn't hateful or misleading, post whatever the hell makes you happy. I know I sounded judgy a second ago, but I really do think people should post what makes them happy. So, cheers. And this is a beer, not a seltzer. <laughs> got a couple pumpkin hide seltzers in the closet. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Courtesy uh. of Shipyard. Very informative because I didn't know all that about seltzers either. Yeah, it was kind of one of those things I wanted to know. Like, why are these breweries able to do this and why? Because, like, breweries can't make cider. They have to have a separate license for cider. So maybe that'll be a future Cider's beer too sugary school. anyways. It is so sweet, yeah. So sweet. 
I don't know. There's there's some seltzers out there that's not that bad. I don't mind. Look, it de- seltzers really aren't that bad. They aren't. I'm going to say it. I don't think s- some seltzers are all that bad. Like, the Blackberry uh, Trulies, pretty good. I like no, them. I'm, I, yeah, I have friends that love them. I just feel like they're not beer, but some people say that about Well, they're not beer because too. they don't get me drunk, so they sober me up, so they're <laughs> definitely not beer. Oh, man. You just haven't had the good ones yet. <laughs> I have not sure found a seltzer that doesn't, like, I just get sober from them. It's crazy. I don't know how to describe it. I'm sure by the time the season's over, I'll end up trying a pumpkin head seltzer. I've already I'll had bring, another friend. I'll bring one to Chicago. Picture. We'll, we'll pound Ooh. one. Oh, <laughs> yay. Because when I'm in Chicago, and I can only drink for a limited amount of time at these amazing breweries, definitely oh, I'm gonna bring one. We're going to start the day with one. It's all good. Oh. I, don't, I don't know how good a pumpkin head seltzer sounds, to be honest with you. It sounds terrible, but I keep hearing it's not that bad. <laughs> Try everything twice. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one. That would take some convincing. Yeah, not going to judge it till I try it, but I don't have high hopes. All right, let's move on to the main topic before we burn the oil away from our episode. Main topic, no tipping. Hobby, I think you got a little bit of background to this one, correct? Mm. It's me. Uh, I was going to say, I think Matt Mash. has more background than I do. Mash, that's right. Mash, what's the background on the no tipping thing? All right, so there's a little known brewery called Switchback out of Burlington, Vermont. Wicked Good Brewery. Yeah, Wicked Good Brewery. Been there many times myself. So, recently, they've come out and said that they are no longer going to be tipping. Like, staff will no longer be working for tips. They're going to... Here's, like, the initial thing. Um, Switchyard... I'm sorry, it's Switchyard Brewery. I made a mistake. Oh, I haven't been there. My apologies. I don't know why I said Switchback. It's Switchyard. Anyways, Switchyard believes business should be responsible for their workers' wages, not the whim of the customer. Employees deserve a living wage that they can count on. So wages for all switchyard co-workers start at $15 an hour and then can increase to $18 an hour. We also believe in providing more than financial security. So we provide all workers with free urgent care and mental health visits, among other benefits like unlimited vacation for full-time workers, uh, one month of paid paternal leave or parental leave, sorry, 32 hours of front-loaded PTO for part-time workers and volunteer paid time off for part-time workers. So this is big because in America, we rely on the tipping system. Like most often than not, servers work for, what, $2 an hour. And so they rely on tips. Now, this is their explanation behind why they're going away from tipping. Tipping often means that the people who serve products end up making more than the ones who create them. We think that disparity is wrong. Tipping was an aristocratic custom that did not take hold in the United States until slavery was abolished. Employers didn't like having to pay wages to newly freed African Americans, so tipping became their only source of income. 70% of all tipped workers are women, who are forced to live on tips and compelled to tolerate inappropriate behavior to make a living. 37% of all sexual harassment claims come from restaurants. Customers don't like having to tip. Doing math when the bill arrives is a pain. We don't like having to tip, so why would we make our customers do it? If someone has a bad experience at Switchyard, that is the company's fault, not the server's. A tip is a very inefficient way of communicating a problem to the people who can actually do something about us. Tell us, don't tip, don't punish somebody's salary. Tips foster competition between coworkers, so for the best shifts and sections instead of cooperation and teamwork. And tips don't ensure good service. Do you tip your doctor or a banker? People in other professions perform their jobs well without being tipped by customers. We know people are not motivated by money to do their job well. They simply take pride in their work. Believing a tip ensures better service is dehumanizing. It makes the server a lower class person. We feel it's just icky. So if you really want to show your appreciation for our beer and service, bring your glass back up to the counter when you're done. Tell your friends what a good time you had. Leave us a review on Yelp, TripAdvisor, or Google Reviews. Follow Switchyard Brewery on any social media platform, or just tell us what you like. It doesn't. It makes. It really does make us feel good, in a way that tips may never feel. So, there's a lot of good history behind the tipping process that I didn't know about until reading that their post, and it, it really does make sense. I get it. It really does to me, at least. It makes sense. Uh, I'm here, interested to hear what you guys think. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I, I don't. I mean, when I go out to the restaurant, I. I mean, (laughs) 
I, I pay more than fifteen dollars in tips, right? Mm-hmm. Like the minimum yeah, I is twenty. Tip like twenty twenty five percent on usual. Yeah, is what I usually do. Especially in the past year. Yeah, I mean, if oh, we yeah. go to a sit down restaurant where you tip like that, the minimum tip that I usually give starts at twenty dollars, right? I don't, you know, twenty percent. Well, twenty dollars, like twenty dollars, is the minimum because it's usually four of us. Sitting? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're taking everybody, yeah, a hundred percent. You can't get, you can't take your family to dinner without spending a shit ton of money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so no matter what the percentage is, right? I mean, it's at least mm-hmm. a twenty dollar bill. You consider that we're not there longer than an hour. That's one right. table, right? Waitresses are making more than twenty dollars, fifteen, eighteen dollars in an hour on tips. Whether it's right or wrong, but the problem that they're going to have is who's going to want to do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you get you get people up here. Our son worked at a restaurant just up the road from here, and that kid was probably making fifty dollars an hour. When you put all those tips together, oh Wait, yeah, some people can walk away with like a few hundred dollars in one night just from working from yeah. tips alone. You know. Let's see. I read all of that on because multiple beer pages shared it. And so as I'm reading it, I was like, oh, okay, this makes sense. This makes sense. And I don't know, where did you say the brewery was from? Because obviously the amount of money you're making hourly depends on where you live, too. Give me a second. Um, well, while you're looking that up, though. So I was reading all that, and I was like, okay, this makes sense. And then I, I've i never Indiana. worked in the industry. Okay, so I don't know how. But, like, I know money goes a lot further here than it does in California or New York. So obviously that plays a part as well. And I don't know what the minimum wage is in that state. But... I've never worked in the industry, but you saw, you know, people were being like, oh, this is great. And then somebody who's worked in the industry was like, no, this is terrible because of X, Y, Z. Or I could have never put my kids through college if this was the thing. You know, I I work extra hard to get good tips. And then somebody else is like, you're not going to get good servers if it's not based on tips because the people who are the best work extra hard and get tipped better. And so it's... I still get shitty servers who are really just shitty and they expect a good tip still. So, I mean... I mean, yeah, that happens too, but so I, I don't know how to feel about it because I'm not in the industry, so I couldn't take it, but yeah. it was interesting seeing the comments because I think the people that are praising it are genuinely think like, oh, this makes sense, this sounds good, especially because of the historical culture of it and the roots it, and whatnot. Um, but I mean, you know, maybe it's one of those things we need to look to other countries because like my husband and I, when we went to Costa Rica for the, we, we were like, wow, that waitress was really happy with her tip. Oh, because we didn't have to tip. Because yeah, I was going to say Europe. Tips. You don't tip in Europe in most places. Right. We didn't realize that at first. And in Costa Rica, though, it's the level of, or the, the transference of money is, you know, it didn't really bother us at all to, to tip more. It didn't, we didn't see an impact, but it was interesting because, yeah, our culture, they're so dependent on that, so... Yeah, I just, and especially in today's labor market, I mean, if there is any worse time for them to do this, it's like today. I just don't see how they're going to hire people or keep people. I mean, that is a, you know, it, it's one thing to say, you know, the people making the product are making less than the people serving the product, but the people making the product doesn't have to deal with the assholes that are the customers. I, I just... I don't know, man. That's a tough that's yeah. a tough way to go. And and here's the other thing. How many servers are in a full time position? You know, where they're making a four oh one K investment and they're you know Yeah, that's also true. It's just man, I, I mean if they can make it work, hats off to them. But man, that's gotta be a tough damn road for people. Uh, especially that worked there before and was relying on those tips to now all of a sudden mm-hmm. be switched to not uh yeah. not having tips but I'm interested. I'm very interested. I wonder. I I know a couple of people who work within breweries who are like bar, bar beer tenders. So I, I might want to reach out to them and be like, "Hey, what is your take on this?" Because it is interesting, like you said. Of course, if it's a slow day, then you're not necessarily worried about the tips because you're like, "Oh, yeah, I'm still getting paid true. 15 an hour." But if it's like a really busy day, you're like, "Oh, I could be making tips." And who's to say that they also aren't? gonna leave like cash tips anyways what's stopping people from that like are they gonna no no you better put that money back in your wallet right now no i think they'll still do that but that's interesting too though because a lot of servers i mean i i'm sure this isn't true for everybody but i have friends that have been servers that are like no i don't claim all my tips so i mean that's that's the other money in uncle sam's pocket um 
tips are under the table, right? I mean, you don't have to claim yeah. that. If you're getting cash tips, you don't we have, have to, to claim, claim a certain amount before they open up like an investigation. Basically. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like you're not claiming all that stuff. So that's right. another really good point that you make. Thank you. I just thought of it. Fuck the government. Down with the government. <laughs> yeah. Down with the government. Like, this like, is just we Big need Brother. another war. <laughs> yeah. Like anybody who's worried about fucking Uncle Sam getting his slice anyways. Right. <laughs> that cocksucker. Wait, look, first of all, Social Security, they, they came out with an article saying Social Security is going to be empty by 2033. So you know what? They're, me and the government got a lot of talking to do as it is. Yeah, because if you're like me, you got a lot of money already wrapped up in that shit that you'll never right. see. So. Why are you taking like... Four hundred dollars out of my paycheck for something I'm not even gonna get. Yeah. Because they're giving it to your mom. <laughs> yeah. My yeah. mom, she's a hairdresser. She we she ain't getting that shit yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's that's gonna be a uh, that's gonna be an interesting interesting outcome to see how that goes. If there's anybody, so we've got a I do have a poll. We'll put it up now. Let's put this poll up in the uh, Facebook chat. Uh, what did I say? Do you support the no tipping policy? Yes or no? It's active now. Go ahead and uh, let us know what you think. I think it, yeah, it's active now. Go ahead and let us know what you think. So do you support a no tipping policy? But what I will tell you is, you know, you say that it's not going to prevent people from tipping. You're right, right? If somebody has cash in their pocket... They're still probably going to be allowed, you know, they're still going to tip if they want to tip. The biggest thing yeah. is, though, if there's a no tipping policy, they're not going to they're not going to process the tips on credit cards. Right. That's no mm, longer going to be an option. Need cash, yeah. yeah. Where that's where ninety nine percent of tipping happens now is, is on the I credit card or the debit card. So, or the yeah. Yeah. But I will tell you that, so the other take of it is, <laughs> so, so the other, the other take of it is, is the, the, the place where I work has a no tipping policy for anybody, outdoor golf ops, uh, servers, valets, anything like that. There's a no tipping policy and it's very, very strict. Like hmm. you don't want to get caught taking a tip from any of the members at all. So mafia would be coming at you. Yeah, so I just think that, I don't know, man. I just think that that's a damn poor way of running a service industry business where with tipping, I mean, like I said, we go to a restaurant, you know, we're not the only table, and if I'm tipping 20 bucks, the other table's probably tipping maybe the same. I'd like to think that they're tipping 20 You know, if they're mm-hmm. serving four tables in an hour, that's $80 potentially that hour that you're taking off the table for them. Well, right, I'm sure they have to like, give a portion of it to busboys, but still, yeah. What if you have like a table of 15 people because you have a party coming, mm. and now there Holy goes fuck. that tip? Like, of course, there are some parties that like stiff the waiter waitress. I've heard that happens a lot with big parties. For for those big parties that will actually tip, like you could potentially be missing fuck. out on like a sixty dollar tip or whatever it could be, assuming that they do tip sixty well. There might well, be I a mean, potentially two hundred dollars on that table. Well, yeah, I'm just people. saying, like sixty's lowballing. But Fuck. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, how are you going to pay somebody fifteen dollars an hour to manage that table? Yeah. Man, I'd tell on you to top kiss of the my other ass. Tables they have to worry about <laughs> yeah. because that that those fifteen people aren't the only ones that they're worried about. Yeah, it's fifteen at one table, and then they have three other tables, so they could be dealing with like forty people potentially at one time. Right. Man, if I'm making fifteen dollars an hour and you give me a table that's got fifteen people at it, I'm telling you to kiss my ass and I'm leaving. A dollar a person an hour. <laughs> yeah, 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 fuck I'm that. Not this bitch. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. That would be a disaster, man. Yeah, that's. But I mean, I guess for a brewery, it does make sense in a way because if you're working like the the say the brewery opens at noon and it's a Monday through Friday gig for you, I guess it makes sense because you may end up making more money than you would otherwise but say it's a saturday and you're working you know it's you got a, an event or something going on at the brewery and you're missing those tips and you're even busier you know like i i'm, I'm curious to see like how that all evens out you know money wise for some of these people yeah, yeah. i don't believe okay. they'll be too happy i i like their reasons for doing it like it really does make sense especially you know it wasn't just you oh, know the whole sure. racist aspect but there are a hundred percent women who put up with piece of shit assholes. Well, look at like Hooters, for example. Because, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm just saying, like, you get these like 
older dudes more often than not, not to generalize. Right, but you could end yeah. up serving, you know, this one guy all night, and then, you know, he turns into a, a dick, and if you're a dick back, well, there goes your tip, sweetheart. So, I mean, it does, they do have good points, but I feel like in the end, the person that's going to get hurt is the server's wallet, so... Wait I, I'm cu- I didn't even vote because I feel like that's I okay. Really only fans don't have a right to vote, so I'm curious on adult to see. content. So they always oh, can right. back, so they can yeah. go back to OnlyFans. They can go right. back. to I OnlyFans. love that. Like that's why you guys have no servers because they're <laughs> yeah. OnlyFans. Yeah. yeah, that's bold yeah. of them to assume that they like during the day they're not filming their OnlyFans and at night they're serving at Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Hoppy, you you sound like you have some experience being the asshole at Hooters. <laughs> <laughs> I do love some lemon pepper wings and curly fries. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here, sweetheart. You're not going to get your tip if your service is shitty. I'm just gonna I really like those EG socks. What are you doing after your shift? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to sit here and verbally oh, shit, molest he's you. In dockers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's in dockers. Are those uh, Crocs on your feet? Yeah. Oh, no. That's terrible. <laughs> yeah, that is. All right, yeah, that's. I think the the. Uh, let's see what the poll is. If you got it, got a, another minute. We'll give you another minute to vote in the poll if you haven't pulled it up. Check it out. Uh, we'll show the results here in just a jiffy. Is a jiffy a thing anymore? A jiff. And a jiff. Jiffy. We don't say jiffy. Jiffy. Do we? Just a I say jiff. it back in a jiff. I think that's back in a yeah, jiff. Yeah, back in a jiff. That's a thing. Uh, that's a thing. Yeah. All right, let's show it. So we've got uh, 33% said yes, they support it, and 67% said no. Oh, wow. That's honestly, the no is a lot higher than I kind of expected. I thought it had been almost more even split, but that's kind of a surprising outcome. Yeah. I'd be curious to know which, the people who voted, if they're in the industry or not. Yeah, there's probably some experience in there, I'm sure. I reached out on our Twitter page just now asking as well. I'm waiting to see if anybody replies. Yeah. All right. Been a great episode. Let's go check in with uh, let's check in with MASH first. MASH what do we have to look forward to from geeks and parting well, shots? So first things first, next Wednesday our guests are gonna be Woods Boss Brewing and Chris from Bottle Share. Um, they're going to be on. Chris? Because, yeah, even Chris. He's back. Oh, he's going to be on. And uh, so we are going to be representing. There is a bottle share release. Uh, it's uh, Clarity Through the Haze. It's going to be releasing after the uh, CBC in Denver next week. And Chris will be there. I wish I could be there. Um, I've taken on a, a more prominent role within bottle share that I'm super, super stoked about. And uh, really excited to see where things go from here. So please, by all means, if you're in Denver, Please get to uh, Woods Boss Brewing. Support them next Friday the 10th. But they'll be a guest next Wednesday. So we look forward to hearing about all about that. I'm not going to spoil anything. Other than that, geeks-wise, uh, we're rolling, man. We're rolling. I, I've reached out to Marvel, DC, and uh, three or four other big publications about getting on their press list to potentially start getting like screeners for TV shows, movies, and things like that. So fingers crossed that we get into that threshold here soon. And uh, we'll see where we go from there. Other than that, tonight we're going to film our Batman episode because last year's Batman Day, our episode errors out the ass. So we're hoping to <laughs> fix that this year. <laughs> <laughs> so this year's Batman episode, I'm hoping, is going to be really dope. So be on the lookout. That's going to be in a couple weeks. Shang-Chi episode just released this week to get you ready for the movie that comes out tomorrow. And then uh, we're both going to see the movie this weekend. And then we're going to review it for next week's episode. So that's kind of what you got coming down the pipe here as far as uh, geeks. Awesome. I need to listen to that episode to drop Monday because my daughter asked me about that movie this week or said something about wanting to watch it. So I'm going to have to listen to that going into that. Good stuff from the geeks. Lauren did some killer research there. So uh, she's the one who researched all the all the good facts. So give it a listen to. And uh, that's all. that's all the information you need for Shang-Chi if you don't know who the character is. Nice. Looking forward to that. Let's go check in with Hoppy. Hoppy, what do we had to look forward to in parting shots? Um, so, yeah, like Matt said, uh, the Shang-Chi episode is all comic book origin. But as far as getting ready for the movie, you should also hop onto Disney Plus and watch Legends, The Ten Rings. It's a five-minute video. And then there's a ten-minute one called All Hail the King 
which was an extra um, little 10 minute video that they did in 2014. And that'll get you caught up as far as the 10 rings that we've actually seen in Iron Man 1 and 3. And then you'll be ready to go. Um, the only other thing I can add on to what uh, Mash just said was I did um, do four days at Megacon a couple weeks ago and I dropped a video and I just dropped the link actually to the video in the comments on Facebook. So that is on um, our Hops News YouTube page. Uh, they don't sell beer at Megacon, but I made sure to sprinkle in, you know, where you can get good beer near Megacon. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Um, and so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Good stuff. Oh, I'm drink drinking a beer from Sideward Brewing. I just moved on to that. So cheers to Sideward. I got to go get my awesome. Pliny in a minute. I'm stoked. Yes, I got a Pliny coming up. Oh, man. You guys are moving on to some phenomenal beers. We're blessed. Lucky, lucky. What can we say? Lucky, lucky. Hey, go check out the uh, guys from Feeling Lucky. Lucky couldn't make it on the night. They've got some big concert going on up there, some big concert fest, music fest or something. Summer fest, I think you said, up there in uh, Milwaukee. So go check those guys out. Got a good episode they dropped on Tuesday. Check us out. Check out our social medias tomorrow. Well, I'll be drunk somewhere um, in Charlotte prior to the football games with Big Daddy. I'm sure we'll hit the live button a time or two. Uh, to check in and talk about that, if nothing more, to introduce you guys to uh, to Big Daddy. Uh, probably see a little bit more of him. Um, sounds like he's going to live up here for the weekend uh, to get, to do the football and the, the concert. So check him out. Uh, check us out. We'll we'll check in somewhere. But uh, good football weekend. Um, hope your team does well, unless you're pulling for ECU. Um, Mash, good luck with Boise State there. I'm hoping, man. I'm hoping they pull it out. If it's just a beautiful time of year anyways. Football's back. I hope back, Boise you know? loses because they're playing UCF. You don't even go here! But my husband did and my daughter's going to. Matter. And I have That's been fine. to so many games there. That's okay. I'm trying to get to some Boise State games this year. Hopefully the coronavirus can campus. chill out because I'm trying to get to all the football games this hey. year and all the things that we've missed over the last year. Next I care more about the U winning. Next week's going to be a big rival week too. We got App State down in Miami. Oh, Jeremy, stop trying to make App State a thing. I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> gonna tell you they they've got a real shot of upsetting Miami. Oh. If if their quarterback plays well on tomorrow we do night, little, little uh, spaces action next Saturday, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. We might do it this weekend. Football. Yeah, oh, we yeah. can do it Maybe Saturday, this Saturday. This we'll see. I don't for know sure. what my plans are. There's a hot air balloon fest in Boise this this weekend. They so I might be out that way, but I think we yeah, should. For sure. All right, guys, hope your team wins, unless you're ECU. And uh, I, I'm kind of torn between Boise State and UCF, to be honest with you. I like both of Go them. Go blue. It'll be a you, great game. UCF. It'll UCF be some, is your pretend champions. Hey, the one thing will be for sure, there'll oh, be some good point. chats tomorrow, right? In the group there text, will there'll be. be some good <laughs> chats in the group yes. text. So. Yes. All right, folks, thank you for tuning in. Uh, check us out next week. We'll be back with a guest next week, so uh, tune into that. Have a great night, and go get a PBR. Tag them and tell them MASH sent you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah do it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, uh, cheers. Have a good night, folks. Cheers, cheers, everybody. Good episode. It'll be fun tomorrow. I'm looking forward to hearing the chat between you two with uh, UCF and Boise State. I know. I think I'm going to skip the – oh, no, I go to the gym a little early. That way I can get home and watch it. I'm going to have to stream it because I don't have ESPN right now, so i got to find a good streaming service. I'll be in the movie theater when the game's on. Uh, <laughs> what time does the game that game start? Like 7, right? 7, seven Eastern, yeah. yeah. Oh, and yeah. our movie starts at 6.30. Oh, shit. That's I didn't plan that accordingly. Why didn't you? You should have just gone Friday. I thought the mo I thought the game was Friday, and we weren't certain if we were going to tell – Honestly, I thought the game was Saturday, to be honest with you. I knew it wasn't Saturday, but I didn't realize it was Thursday night. You can't be a very good UCF fan if you're not going to that game. I know. So no, she's I'm not a very good shit. UCF fan at all. I didn't go to UCF. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Have a good night. You guys are recording next, Later. right? Later. Yeah. Yeah, have fun. I sent you the invite, so I got to go get ready. Sweet. All right, guys. Okay. We'll see you. Later. Bye-bye. Okay.